colors of the walls of the church have been um, pulled down and we can um, zoom across the planet to bring the good news of salvation. And I um, applaud you for your consistent prayer initiative <coughs> that you are bombarding heaven um, morning uh, after morning. And we know that prayer changes everything, but um, prayer also changes us. It changes people. It changes situations and circumstances. And we are living in a season where we certainly need faith that is on fire, um, faith that um, burns through despair and discouragement and uh, doubt and um, unbelief. And we just need God to continue to um, encourage us and to ignite our faith. And so I'm excited to be with you this week. I'm sorry that I was unable to um, tune in last night and we thank God for Elder um, Simons. I know that he is a mighty man of God and brought a mighty word. I thank um, Brother Easy Abinga for the opportunity for the invitation and this entire prayer team. And so without further ado, we want to get into the word of God. Um, we want to lift up Jesus Christ. He said, if I would be lifted up, then he would draw all men and women unto himself. And so I would like to draw your attention um, to the 16th chapter of John's gospel, um, John's gospel, the 16th chapter. And I am going to read um, in your hearing verses one to four, and then we are going to drop down to verse 33. Again, that's John's gospel, um, the 16th chapter, uh, verses one to four, and then we're going to um, conclude in verse 33. And the Bible says, these things I have spoken to you that you should not be made to stumble. They will put you out of the synagogues Yes, the time is coming that whoever kills you will think he offers God service. And these things they will do to you because they have not known the Father nor me. But these things I have told you that when the time comes, you may remember that I told you of them. And these things I did not say to you at the beginning because I was with you. And verse 33 says, these things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. I want to just invite you to bow your heads with me for the next few moments as we ponder on the thought, confidence in chaos confidence amidst chaos. Father in heaven, God, we thank you so much uh, for your mercies of this brand new day. We thank you that the sun is poised to rise up, God, over the eastern sky and in it bringing um, a new day, new life, a new opportunity. And Father, we know that we can com be confident amidst the chaos that swirls around us in this world because Jesus has overcome the world. And now I ask God for a fresh anointing that you would put your words in my mouth, that they, God, would indeed be words of life and words of salvation and words of transformation. I pray that you would reach down deep into our hearts, God, and that you would bring revival, um, that you would bring renewal, and that you would set our faith on fire. And so we bless you and we praise you in the mighty and powerful name of Jesus. Come on and let the people of God agree with me and say hallelujah. And amen. amen, and amen, amen. and amen. amen. And so our pericope that is nestled in the 16th chapter of John's gospel, um, it is a familiar passage of scripture. It has its theological underpinnings in what would be considered as Jesus' closing discourse to his disciples. His death is imminent, and he is looking ahead to and beyond Calvary. He is preparing his beloved disciples for the reality that is ahead of them. They have not fully grasped the totality of what Jesus has been saying to them. They, they are still looking in anticipation of a Davidic king, waiting with expectancy for the restoration of the kingdom and the deliverance of Israel from their Roman enemies. And in verse 33, Jesus concludes this course in which he lays before his disciples the antithetical complexity of being a disciple 
of Christ. In other words, the conflict of the Christian life. Jesus underscores in uh, verses one to four that I am telling you these things, beloved, that you will not be caught unawares, that you are, are not discouraged, that you won't stumble, that you won't fall away when, when trouble breaks out in your life, when you are pursued by principalities and powers and persecutors and prosecutors. These men have had the privilege of being handpicked by heaven to sit at the feet of the master. They have had ringside seats as he healed the sick and gave sight to the blind and caused the deaf to hear and the dumb to speak and the lame to leap. They, they saw him cast out demons and command the winds and the waves to be quiet and cause the dead to live again. They experienced his power. Not only did they experience his wonder working power, but there was a promise that all power was going to be given to them. But their experience is going to be bittersweet. While they have the favor of God, they, they simultaneously have the disdain of the world and the displeasure of the devil. They, they would experience the thrill of victory. You, you will do mighty conquests for the kingdom and, and baptize many and, and heal the sick and, and cast out demons and uh, people will be healed in your shadow. But, but, but you will experience the agony of defeat. I'm letting you know, beloved, because you proclaim my name, they will call you names for my name's sake. You are going to be beaten and rejected and, and despised. Jesus promises that he predicts them uh, to them pain and problems, sorrow and sadness, heartache and heartbreak. In this world, you will have tribulation. Jesus warns his ambitious friends repeatedly who still relish in the moment of his triumphant entry into Jerusalem. The, the shouts of Hosanna to the son of David still ring in their ears. He warns them so when they are in the midst of the fire, their faith would not fail. You, they won't be disturbed and perturbed by the distresses and the disasters of this life. So they won't give up and, and wonder if God has given up on them. Don't be confused by the confusion and caught off guard by the chaos. He knows that his disciples have, have heard, but, but not really comprehended what he has said. They have not grasped fully this reality. I want to call forth the witness and the testimony of John the Baptist when, when he was in prison and about to be headed and he, he sends word to Jesus, are you the one or should I expect someone else? I, I know I saw you do powerful things and you performed mighty uh, miracles, but, but are you the one? Are you the Messiah, the man who cried confidently at the Jordan, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, but the preacher in the midst of a persecution could not preach to himself. He, he was drowning in discouragement and doubt. Are you listening to the word of God this morning? Come over here and testify, Peter. Uh, Peter said, Lord, I will follow you to the ends of the earth. Uh, I will go to the grave for you. But when he was cross-examined before the cock crowed, cockle doo doo do he denied him it was the mighty prophet elijah who who called fire down from heaven uh, in the sight of the enemies of god but finds himself in the valley of despair and depression and discouragement and distress uh, he was in the midst of the agony of defeat jesus said i'm telling you these things beloved that you would not be discouraged but we too have selective hearing, what I've coined a spiritual amnesia. Come on and put that in the chat, spiritual amnesia. We readily remember the promises of blessings and prosperity, but, but juxtaposed with the blessings are, are some crosses, but we are slow to grasp and ungrace the, the crucibles of the cross. Jesus said, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Take up your cross. No cross, no crown. 
See, to follow Jesus means that you are going to have to bear your own cross. It, it is the roughness of the cross that smooths the rough and rigid places in our character. Beloved, the word of admonition was not just for the immediate 12, but it is for all of those who follow Christ and call themselves children of God. We too are going to have some struggles. The devil, the prince of this world, he is going to try to discourage us and cause us to be distressed and dejected. In this world, in this Christian journey, we are going to have tribulation. Some people that you have walked with and, and talked with, they are going to let you down. Some people are going to turn their back on you and they will hurt you. And even your own family and, and your children, Satan will use whoever and whatever and whenever. But friends of mine, even though we understand this intellectually and we can quote the scripture, we too often respond like John the Baptist and Peter. So many times in our Christian journey, when we encounter conflict and chaos, we begin to question God, to doubt him and to resist his leading. We begin to waver in faith. Some are ready to leave the church and hand in the usher badge and hand in the deacon badge and they will proclaim, I'm not retiring, I'm not returning tithe anymore. I'm not going to church anymore. And they will run off and do things that are contrary contrary to God. I remember that I went through a very difficult trial in my life and I was disappointed and discouraged and downtrodden. And I went and I said, God, you know, I am so frustrated after being a vegetarian for 15 years. I said, God, I'm so upset. I'm going to run to Kentucky Fried Chicken because I am so mad at you. Sometimes when we are disappointed, we are ready to diss God. When we are disappointed, we are tempted to distrust God and tempted to do things that are contrary to to our walk in faith. I'm not saying anything's wrong with eating Kentucky Fried Chicken, but I had been walking in a commitment with God. And because I was so upset and so weak and feeble in faith, I was ready to rebel against God and rebel against my commitment. We too are, are, are like John sometimes. And we ask, God, are you still in control? Are you really listening, God? Yes, you have answered some of my prayers. And yes, God, I have experienced your blessings. But, but God, do you know what you're doing? Can I trust you, God? Am I supposed to be here? Oh, God, did you hear what the doctor said? Did you see what my boss did? What my spouse did? What my friends did? God, did you see? God, did you hear? God, did you notice? God, I want to let you know this is too much. Sometimes when the storms of life arise, we are ready to abandon ship. We are ready to cry out, Lord, don't you care that we perish? Oh, beloved, I zoomed in this morning to let you know in this world, we will have tribulation while we are in the church serving God because we are not exempt from the vicissitudes of life and the, the struggles of the human experience, the, the press and the precious, the false prophets and the prosperity teachers are going to tell you one side of the story. It's, it's about the blessings. It's about what God can give you. But the Bible says straight is the way to eternal life. Wide is the road to destruction. Sometimes we lose faith and uh, some lose their way because uh, they they only have a shallow and superficial connection with God, doctrinally knowledgeable. Listen to what the spirit is saying this morning, but, but spiritually weak, not connected to God, but have been around Jesus, but really don't know him. Listen to what the spirit is saying. The disciples had been around Jesus for, for three and a half years, uh, yet they had never experienced the touch of faith uh, to some God is a uh, 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 God of, of a sugar daddy that can rain uh, candy and houses and cars from heaven. Like he is a Santa, a heavenly Santa Claus or a genie in a bottle. And we don't understand when our blessing is painful. Can I teach right here? That's an oxymoron, a painful blessing. That means when God is working 
for our good in, in painful situations and blessing us when it feels like a curse. My goodness, Jesus, he sometimes is blessing us when it feels like a curse, when he is working in the midst of circumstances. And, and we know that all things work together for good, even when they don't feel good. Can I clarify a little bit longer? I had an experience where I had been praying and, and praying and anticipating a blessing. I, I had been asking God for favor for a situation and a circumstance. And when it did not work out, I was disappointed again, disappointed. And I was upset with God, mad God, why? Why, Lord, didn't you allow this uh, to work out for me, God? Why didn't you bless me? But it was un until months later that I understood that God did bless me. He shielded me. Come on, somebody, from what was not a good situation. Sometimes we are praying for what we know not of. Sometimes we are praying for things that God has not planned for us. Sometimes we are praying for things that are not good for us. And I want to bless God today. Come on, somebody. I know it's early in the morning and it's very late at night in here, but, but only God God can see around corners and only God can see through walls. And I want to thank God, somebody that he has x-ray vision and God knows the future because he holds the future in his hand and he knows the end from the beginning because hallelujah, somebody, he is uh, the beginning and the end. We know that he has uh, been in the future and worked out the present and come on, somebody put it in the chat. We know that all things work together for good, even when they don't feel good. And, and Paul had a thorn in his flesh and it was to keep him humble. Paul, that thorn is to keep you close to me. I know it doesn't feel good, but it's working together for good. That's the word for today. Even when it doesn't feel good, it's working together for our good. Things will happen in our lives, in your life and, and my life that will blindside us and blindside you and stretch you and test you to what seems beyond your limits. You will feel like the earth moves under your feet. But I want to promise somebody as we think about faith on fire, he said, come on, put it in the chat. He will never give you more than you can bear, even when it feels unbearable. Sometimes we have to endure hellish experiences to escape the, the fires of hell. Beloved, I know some of you are experiencing situations and circumstances that perhaps are causing you to wonder. You are discouraged and distressed and downtrodden, maybe depressed and even overwhelmed. And if it appears that sometimes you are on the losing side, that you are not prospering, and it seems as if you are about to drown in your sorrows and your words. It, it feels like you are, are beaten up and beaten down. And it seems like the devil is winning and, and you are on the ropes and you feel like throwing in the towel. Jesus said, I already won. Come on, somebody. He says that I have another move. God always has another move. He is the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah that has already uh, conquered the enemy. He has a conquered sorrow and sickness and death and hell. And I want to let somebody know that he is the conquering lion that says to you in this world, you will have tribulation. But in spite of it all, the Prince, Prince of Peace promises us peace. You can be confident in spite of what the devil throws at you, in spite of all the chaos in your life. Why? Because at the end of it all, come on, somebody, Jesus said, be of good courage, be of good cheer, uh, be confident. I have overcome the world. I defeated the devil in the wilderness and I defeated him in Gethsemane and I walked willingly up to Calvary and I defeated him on the cross. I, I defeated death, hell, and the 
the grave. I have overcome the world. I have overcome the enemy. I have overcome all your enemies. I have overcome every temptation and every circumstance and every disease. Come on, somebody. Every diagnosis and every prognosis and COVID-19 and 20 and 21 and Delta, Omicron and 5G, Psi, Omega. I've come overcome pandemics and epidemics and persecution. I've overcome every hardship and hospitals and hospices and hopelessness and broken relationships, broken hearts and brokenness as, as an empty bank accounts. I've overcome pain and problems. I've overcome tight budgets, unwilling workers and cantankerous members. I have overcome the system of the world, the prince of the world, the plans of the world. I have overcome the devil. Oh, brothers and sisters, I tuned in this morning to South Africa to let you know to be of good courage and be of good cheer, be of good courage. Jesus has overcome what you are enduring right now. Cheer up my brother and cheer up my sister. Jesus has overcome the world. He has overcome what is ahead of us because he has, he can see into the future. As a matter of fact, he holds the future in his hands and he can see around corners and through walls and doors. He is the king that will never be voted out. To. He will never be impeached, never indicted. And his kingdom is going to reign uh, forever and ever and ever. Come on, somebody say hallelujah and amen. He is a bridge over troubled waters. He is the repairer of the breach. He is a healer and a miracle worker, a promise keeper and a problem solver. He is the living water and the bread that has come down from heaven. He is our redeemer and the lover of your soul. His victory is our victory. He has overcome the world and every plan and every catastrophe and all confusion and chaos. Cheer up my brother and cheer up my sister. Jesus has overcome the world. Keep your head up and look up because his victory is your victory. I know, beloved, it is painful right now. Everybody on this planet is going through so much. But stay the course. Press on and press forward. Crawl if you can't walk. Disappointment without the dis is an appointment, divine appointments. Our disappointments are God's appointments and opportunities to work. He has not left us alone. I'm speaking to somebody. He has given us the Holy Spirit. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I will send the comforter. At this moment, if you are lacking confidence in God, he says, trust me when you can't trace me. Don't trust what you see in the natural, but believe that I am working in the supernatural. I am God from everlasting to everlasting. I have already worked out your presence. I have a plan not to destroy you, but to bless you, to save you, to save your family. Somebody it was in the chaos of Calvary that Jesus overcame the curse of sin. He overcame pain and problems. And it's at the foot of the cross this morning. He invites you to leave your concerns, your chaos and your brokenness to experience his healing flood because what he starts, he finishes. And what he brings you to, he is going to bring you through. We are more than conquerors. As I conclude, I just want to share this story with you. I had an opportunity to be in North Carolina in the United States. And one of the things that was on my bucket list is to climb a mountain. And I am terrified of heights. And as I, I ascended up that mountain, there were so many times that I was tempted to turn back. And my beloved husband was with me and um, he is athletic. And um, he was like, dear, if you want to turn back, let's, let's turn back now. And I sat there at the midst of the mountain. I sat on the bench and I said, well, you know, I'm a little timid to, to continue to climb. The air gets thinner and I don't know if I can make it all the way to the top. And the adversary was trying to 
discourage me, but God was sending people to discourage me. I'm talking about being confident in the chaos. And so as I, uh, I put one foot in front of the other, and I said, I'm going to start again. And there were people that were coming down the mountain that made it. They said, you can make it, you can make it. And as I continued to climb and continued to climb, it got higher and higher. And then there was a gentleman that I couldn't, I didn't see. He came up alongside us and he said, you know, there is treachery at uh, near the end of the mountain. And he continued to hike and sojourn with us. And we got higher and higher and it became thinner and thinner. And then I said to my husband who, who loves adventure, I said, honey, I know that you want to get to the very top. And so you go ahead and I'll just tarry and, and I'll find my way and I'll stay at this level. And the gentleman continued to tarry and my husband went forward. And there I was confronted with the very end of the road, the end of the mountain. And there were these very jagged rocks. And there was a sign that said death beyond this point. There, there is danger beyond this point. But the spirit of the living God was with me. And he said, this is how it's going to be at the end. It's going to be just you and me. And he said, you can make it. Go ahead and put your hand in my hand and put your hand in the crevice of the rock. And there it was, a sign that said danger. There could be death. And I'm afraid of heights. There was nobody around. The gentleman had disappeared and moved the other way. My husband was on the top and I began to put my hand uh, in the crevices of the rock and I positioned my feet and the spirit of God said, I'm with you. If you hold on to me and trust me, I'm going to, I'm going to take you to the end. And as I climbed to the top and I could stand and I could see the clouds and I could hear my husband's voice. And God said, see, you made it through. And he hoisted me by his spirit up to the top. And he said, this is how it's going to be when you enter into the kingdom of God. It's going to be just you and I. I want to let somebody know today that he said he's never going to leave you nor forsake you. And even though the road gets narrow and narrow and it's just enough for you and God, he's going to bring you through. It's not your husband or your family members or, or church members. It's going to be you and Jesus. You are more than conquerors and you can be confident amidst the narrow roads and the chaos us in your life that Jesus is going to carry you through. And as I looked up and I had a glimpse of glory, a glimpse of heaven and how we overcame the world, how I overcame the world and the trials and tribulations and God brought me through. I want to tell somebody today that victory is yours. You can be confident in the chaos of your life. You can trust God. You can trust Jesus. And I want to remind you today in this world, you will have tribulation, but cheer up and look up. Jesus has overcome the world. He has overcome the world and his victory is your victory. And so this morning, as we prepare for prayer, I want to invite you to trust Jesus. Amen. As you walk that Jericho road, as he will hide you in a cleft of the rock, he is more than a conqueror. You can be confident in the chaos. He has overcome the world. He has overcome every situation and every trial. And if you believe that this morning, I want to go invite you to go ahead and just put a praise in the chat this morning. I want to invite you to lift up your hands and say, thank you, Jesus. You have overcome the world and we can trust you in all things. Hallelujah this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I want to invite us right now as we conclude this message. What a mighty God we serve. I want you to go forward in this brand new week, in this brand new day, in this brand new morning, confident that whatever the devil throws at you, whatever this world throws at you, that your faith can be on fire because Jesus has said, be of good courage. I have overcome the world. Would you pray with me? Would you pray with me? Father in heaven, God, we are so grateful this morning for your goodness and for your mercy and for your grace. Father in heaven, we're so grateful that you have reminded us that you have overcome the world, that you have overcome the systems of the world, the prince of the world, 
You have overcome the adversary, God. You have overcome sickness and disease. You have overcome death and sorrow, sadness, separation, discouragement, God. You have overcome, God, everything, God, that this world will throw at us. And we thank you that no weapon that is formed will ever prosper. Father in heaven, God, I present your children to you, God, this listening congregation that is scattered all across South Africa. I pray, God, that the Holy Spirit will continue to undergird them. I pray, God, that these words will be words of life and words of transformation, words of salvation, words of encouragement, that we will continue to walk in faith, God, that we will trust you when we cannot trace you. And God, we cling to that promise that everything that is happening to us is working together for our good. And so God, this morning, we bless you and we praise you. I pray God that you would strengthen somebody's faith. God, I want to pray that you would bless somebody, that you would lift up their heads, God, out of discouragement and that they would see you. And as they put one foot in front of the other, that they would know that they would make it if they continue to walk by faith with their hand in your hand, they will make it into the kingdom of God. We want to thank you that Jesus overcame the world one day on a cool cruel cross and he came up out of the dead with all power in his hands and his victory is our victory. And so God, today I pray that you would bless your children with confidence amidst the chaos that we can trust you and that you will never leave us nor forsake us. And so I pray a blessing in this week as we go forward that you would set our faith on fire, that we will go for and tell people, come see a man. His name is Jesus and he has overcome the world. So we bless you today, God, and we praise you in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on and let the people of God say hallelujah and amen Hallelu and amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.